So you have a Ryzen 9 9900X3D, one of the best gaming CPUs in the market. But you heard that you can make it run better. More performance, lower temperature, less power draw, less noise, all at the same time. Well, that is true, and this is the right video for it. So welcome back at the Motion PSUs, and here we are with a nice undervolting tutorial for this X3D Ryzen. Now, a few disclaimers before we start, okay? So this is gonna work for every single motherboard in the market with every single cooler in the market and going back to the motherboard it doesn't matter the chipset and it doesn't matter the brand so today we have a gigabyte b850 aorus elite ice but if you have like an x870 a b650 even an a620 and from every single brand asus msi asrock it doesn't matter it's gonna work the same for every single motherboard so rest assured. Now you may have to cross-reference this video with the other videos in my CPU undervolting guide. So you can see if I have a video for your motherboard as well with a different CPU. So you can see the names because the name of the setting change a little bit depending on the motherboard, but the procedure and the values are the same. Now we're gonna have three different presets. I'm gonna have the undervolting preset, the dynamic, the static undervolting, and then a dynamic overclock with the undervolt at the end. So the only thing I ask you guys is at the end of the video, if the video is actually helpful for you, will you drop a like and subscribe? If you agree on that, we can get started. So let's go in the BIOS and let's start tweaking. Well, here we are in the BIOS and let's not lose any time. So first of all, we're going to go in the advanced mode. Now, depending on your BIOS, you may do that by clicking F2, F7 or something like that. We then want to go into settings or advanced settings. We do not actually want to go into tweaker okay so let's go there and then you want to find the md overclocking tab accept that we're going to damage our system and then let's go i'm kidding by the way and then let's go ahead so we want to go on precision boost overdrive and we want to put it on advanced we then want to go on pbo limits and you want to put this on motherboard we then want to go all the way down to curve optimizer and put this one on all cores put it on negative and hit 15. And by doing this, we have already finished our undervolting. So if you just want to undervolt your CPU and you want something that's gonna work for 99.9% .9 of CPUs, you can save, click F10, save everything, close and drop a like and subscribe. But in case you wanna stay, we can move forward with all the other settings. So first of all, 15 uh, is gonna work for most 1900 X3Ds now. This CPU is a bit less lucky than a 9800X3D in my testing, but if you are just uh, with a little bit of luck, you can get 20 to work. And basically the higher this number, the lower the temperature and the higher your performance is going to be. So this number is the key point. And uh, I've had one single sample do for this table, a single one. So pretty bad. I've had a few do 25 and I've had one which was trash and it was only doing 10. So you may want to test this out. If you don't want to spend much time testing it, put 15. If you want to spend just a little bit of time testing it, put 20, okay? We are covering all the extra settings, for example, like temperature limit, X3D mode at the end. So now let's move forward with the static option. Now you cannot do the static and dynamic together. So if you want to do a static option, we need to go ahead and put precision boost overdrive on auto again. So we can go ahead and this time going to tweaker. Now the tweaker may be called OC, overclocking tab, AI tuning, something like that. Okay, so you need to find it. And then you want to go all the way down until you find two things. So you want to find the CPU clock and the CPU V core. So for the clock, you want to put it on 50 to get stock performance and to get more efficiency. Now, this dynamic, this static option is gonna perform less than the dynamic one, but it's gonna basically flatten out the fluctuations of clock and also give you more efficiency. So you want to go all the way down to vCore and you want to put your vCore to 1.05. Now, if you are really unlucky and this doesn't work for you, okay, you may wanna get it up a little bit, maybe 1.075, or if you have the worst CPU on earth, then you can do 1.1. You can also push this one a little bit more and go all the way up to 52 if you want, no problem. If you go to 52, I find on average, you're gonna need around 1.15 to get it stable. If you're really unlucky, 1.175, but you don't 
need more. Okay, now this is the second preset. Let's go back to the third preset, which is going to be the actual proper overclocking done hard. So you want to put this one back on auto, of course, because you can only do one of these three presets at a time. You can do them together. And now we want to go back into settings, MD overclocking, accept, precision boost overdrive, advanced, and you want to put the limits on motherboard. You want to go on curve optimizer, put it like before, 15 or 20. And then you want to go on precision boost overdrive scalar control. You want to put this on manual and make sure this is on 1x because listen, this is what everyone is getting wrong in these tutorials. This, if you put it, for example, on 10x, you're actually overvolting your CPU. So we are basically nullifying our undervolting work. So this is terrible. Then on CPU boost clock override, you want to put enabled positive and we want to give it plus 200. This, this is going to work. It's, it's working on every single one of my CPUs so far. But as usual, you want to make sure you test this out. And with this, we also have the third preset done. And now I'm just going to show you guys a few extra tips. So these things I'm going to show you from now on, they're going to work on any single one of the three presets. So you choose one preset and then you do these extra things. So the first thing is going to be the platform thermal throttle control. Basically, if you put this one on manual, you can tell your CPU to throttle at a certain degree point. And I always set this one for my CPUs because I don't want them to go over 85 degrees uh, because I think they're gonna last a bit longer and have a better life if they stay under 85. You can also put this on 90 if you want, no problem. Or if you really care about temperature, noise and efficiency, you can go lower and put 75. Again, you may wanna play around with it. If you want to just copy my recommendation, it's 85. Then there is another important setting and it's gonna be into tweaker. In my BIOS, it's actually available even in the easy mode. And that is the X3D Turbo mode. This thing, this thing actually works for gaming. It gives you a nice improvement. So I think you should enable it. Only if you're only gaming. If you're doing productivity as well, leave it off. Okay, but you may want to enable it. And now one last thing is Eco mode. Now Eco mode can be useful, but only if you're after absolute efficiency and if you're going with one of the efficiency presets. So in case you're going with it, you may want to enable it, but 105 watts I find is plenty fine. You don't want to just choke your CPU to go all the way down to 65, it's too little, okay? So you may want to do this as well. But this is the same as if we basically give it a nice power limit in the actual PBO tab in case you want. Now, one last thing is gonna be the Expo XMP DRAM. Make sure you enable it. And then I have a dedicated video on how you can tweak basically the UCLK Div1 modes. You can put it one to one. And this, this, these are all things which give you extra free performance, but they're not technically undervolting. I have another video for it. And with this, we have really covered everything you can do to this Ryzen chip. So if the video was helpful, please remember your promise, drop a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in another video. Bye-bye.